works on sedimentology, no, she works on hydrogeology, so she measures water levels in Louisiana and how to conserve our wetlands. Mm -hmm. And she goes out to the swamp and she takes core sampling and she analyzes the sediments there. And she is also, if I didn't have her, I probably wouldn't have gone through mineralogy, petrology, or any of my upper level classes at, <laughs> um, at LSU. And also field camp, we were, we were roommates and we were besties. She's your geology sister. Yes, she's my <laughs> geology sister. Absolutely, 100%. So I'm so glad that she's joining. Thanks, Ashton. Is this a macro year? Is that a, am uh, I completely off? <laughs> I think this is a snap brink. Oh. But, um, yes, it is. I believe so. Let me see if I can narrow down the species. Well, we're coming up on it quick. Yeah, it's not a rank for sure. It's a little bit thicker than some of the other ones. Mm. Um, did you want to share, Elsie, as well, about any teachers or mentors while we're still talking about teachers that helped you uh, become a researcher at Palau International Coral Reef Center? Um, yeah, so I've had quite a few and um, they've all really had, like I've had different phases of my career, so they've had like different impacts, um, but for my most recent change, which is when I went from working in science communication and education to becoming a researcher. Mm -hmm. um, I had a really supportive um, department at our organization that is research, so they really encourage um, people, if they're interested in research, to apply and begin to uh, explore the field. So um, my boss, um, Geraldine Ringeed, um, has been really helpful and understanding and like a great, really supportive um, boss. And then also my, our head researcher, Evelyn Otto. Um, I was, I mean, we're, we're colleagues and friends, but then when I was talking to her about, I'm interested in applying for the research position because it opened up. So it was like a, a lateral move for me. Um, I was just telling her I was nervous and she really encouraged me to apply and um, try it out. And then here I am some years later still working in the research field. So um, awesome. those are two really smart and competent women, especially um, who encouraged me that I could, you know, make that move um, and start in research. So grateful for them. I don't, they're probably not listening because it's uh, not the right time zone in Palau or maybe they're working, but, um, and I, I still work with them to that, to this day. So wow. it's really great to have a team of like, really competent women and also our research department is almost all women um yeah. so that yeah. like really uh, yeah there's only two men so when we have like lab meetings we're kind of like this is a gender inequality right here but <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so uh it's a really great environment there and just our organization itself is really has been great and supportive wow yeah that's so awesome i love that when teachers and mentors and bosses they have your back and you know encourage you um, and with that, I'll pass this back to amazing teacher, Miss Hunt, Tori. And yes. uh, <laughs> speaking of amazing teachers. Yeah, so dedicated, waking up all hours of the night to connect with classrooms and um, just so passionate passionate about helping her students. She's so. just like, what? <laughs> she has no idea <laughs> what we're talking about. I'm, on, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, giving you a very good introduction right now. So I'll take it away. <laughs> and isn't it Saturday in Palau? Can we also get a zoom on these little white corals, please? Little white corals. Oh, there is. I'm, I mean, we don't, I don't think we needed the circle. What? <laughs> no, we needed it. 
I, well, we're now streaming the Telestrator, so it's illustrating for people on shore, too. Oh, oh what? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. We, that's why we saw it in the lounge. Yeah. Oh and we haven't gosh. been. Oh. Thank you. Coming out. Yep. These guys look similar to the white pair of gorges we may have collected earlier in the expedition. Yeah, Ed, so it's 1 p.m. on a Saturday in Palau, yeah. and um, no matter how dedicated the researchers are, they do have weekends, so I don't think yeah. they would be... Uh, <laughs> We came very close to the dateline, the... The um, uh, false one, meridian, is that what it's called? Yeah, the real one, 180. Oh. <laughs> uh, we were at 179.8, I think, oh, earlier cool. in the expedition, and... Uh, it's 180. It almost became the future. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. There's a maritime tradition that if you are on a vessel that crosses that 180th, you join the Order of the Golden Dragon, I believe it is. Oh, so we did not join the Order. <laughs> no, we tried to get them to nudge the boat over a little, but we were... Did you really? Work, yeah. <laughs> That's we're so... Work focused. Uh, I'm going to try it again later this year because we'll be crossing the equator near there. And that's a whole nother On the way to where? Uh, Jarvis. Oh. This year? Yep. Oh, well, okay. It's a, yeah, sorry, go uh, ahead, Mike. No, no, I was just wondering what this is. It looks I don't know. Like, kind of like a sponge, but I like a zoo. Mm -hmm. yeah. Iris stutter. Holding? Yep, it's just sponge? a small glass sponge. So delicate. I'll say uh, I love on. that you're surrounded by women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so much fun. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know how it, and it, um, I don't know if it's like what the reason is, but like most of our research department is women and um, most of our leadership is women and a lot of the people women uh, working in our environmental sector are women. So uh, maybe awesome. it's just a, um, yeah, I don't really know what the explanation for that is, but it's cool. Uh, qualified people in, in a position? Maybe that's the explanation? Oh, I mean, yes, yes, of course, yeah. Ed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very true. No, but it's funny that you mentioned the your reasoning for wanting to cross the international dateline because on one of our other watches, we were talking about why we didn't want to cross it. <laughs> uh. And uh, Mia was saying it's because it messes up the navigation, the navigation system, or like it just creates uh. a lot of... Um, sort of software, extra paperwork, something like that. But yeah, so uh, it's funny to hear the other side of yeah. why it would have been cool. I've crossed it like three times and uh, the boat never uh, blew up because we crossed it or anything. Maybe they do have to do a lot of work with the Fourth uh, time's a charm. mapping system. <laughs> You're a triple golden dragon. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's like um, how the world ended at white. I'm Nautilus Platinum. I get, <laughs> I get the deluxe stateroom, two free bags. <laughs> Premium seating at meals. Mm -hmm. All my meals on the boat are free. <laughs> Sounds oh, <yeah>. familiar. <laughs> you get your own mug. <laughs> I, I bring my own. It's even personalized. <laughs> get an ocean view. But yeah, I got <laughs> I got an outside cabin this time. <laughs> well, there is one cabin that's not an outside cabin. So uh, it, it is possible to get that. Wait. Oh, it's outside. It doesn't have a portal. Somebody okay. 81? Well, there, I, I don't think the edge actually touches up against the, the hull. That's why there's no porthole in the quad on, oh. the, on the starboard side. Yeah, that's 81. Slept in there. It is pitch black. Ooh. Oh, wait. Let me think about that. No, it'd be 80. Port even starboard on. Yeah, 81. 
So Tori, yeah, when you came in, we were just talking about, or we were um, discussing teachers and um, teachers Aww. that have had an influence on our lives. And Hannah did a shout out to her friend who is also an awesome teacher, Lucy. Go Lucy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I was also talking about some of my mentors and teachers in my life. So if you wanted to shout out some teachers that helped you on your teacher journey, we would love to hear that. Yeah, I, um, we've had this conversation once before and I know I talked about a teacher that I had when I was in middle school and I still have not successfully found a way to contact ah. him. Um, I literally sat here for the rest of the watch trying to find his information and it took me like an hour to realize that the middle school closed this year and they opened up a new building. So he doesn't work at that school anymore. Um, but I've like been trying to reach out to some friends and see if they can like get me in touch with him. I bet the school like district would do grade. that. If you rang up and said, I'm a former teacher now, a student, or a student and now a teacher, I'd love to see if you could send a note to this teacher and yeah. share my contact info, they do it. Yes. I'm gonna keep working on that because I'd love to get in contact with him. But I also have, um, I definitely had a few teachers when I was in high school. Um, and I moved around a lot as a kid because my dad was in the army. So that meant that sometimes I'd start the school year in like the middle of the year, which was always like a super hard transition, no matter kind of how old I was. And I did like two and a half years of high school in Alabama before we moved uh, to Raleigh, North Carolina. And that move was especially hard because I was participating in what's called the IB program or International Baccalaureate program. It's uh, kind of similar to taking AP courses like Happy in high birthday. school. Happy birthday again. <laughs> um, and uh, when we were gonna move during like the middle of my junior year, I had to find a school that also had the IB program and had like classes that I could take that were similar so like I didn't lose my credits. And the teachers that I had at that school before I left really, really helped with that transition. And that was like really amazing and they you know, I stayed in touch with them. Those were the teachers I reached out to for like letters of recommendations for college. Cause I, you know, was only at my new school for like a year and a half. And yeah, those teachers are amazing. I still keep in touch with a lot of them. Derek, where your cursor is, that is kind <laughs> of where I want to look for a rock. You okay. need that. Sorry, I, I wasn't here for the one that we initially took. All right, let's go see what we find. But yeah, just along that contour line. Okay. It doesn't have to be right there. Yeah, I'm trying to head up like about there. Okay. That looks good. It is kind of funny when you think back to the, like, especially teachers that had a big impact on you as you got later into, like, you, you know, your secondary education. Mm -hmm. You look back on that as, you know, a, an adult, and you're like, they were probably only six years older than me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. Yeah. You certainly don't have that perspective when you're, you know, in year 11 or something. Uh. Yeah, that's, I teach mostly freshmen right now. Um, and I was sharing earlier about how I pulled up a, like, presentation I made when I was a freshman in high school about, like, kind of what I thought my future was going to look like. And it's so funny because sometimes, like, I'll see on their faces where they're kind of like, man, she's so much older than me. This is like, yeah. and I'm looking at them like, y'all, honestly, this was like, <laughs> I know. not that long ago. <laughs> right. Um, and, yeah, that's always interesting. That's a cool gap down there on the right. Yeah, and there's a viewer that suggested a website called classmates.com that's good for tracking down teachers and students. And someone else had also suggested that to me in the chat. So I had made an account and I've been using that. So thank you. That's been helpful.
We put it right there. Okay, we're seeing some lobate flow and some pill lavas. So the lobate flow I'm looking at is over here. And then some pillow lavas. Wait, I think that's actually part of the lobate flow. Sorry. From <laughs> sometimes when from far away I'm like, oh that really because this again, this lobate flow looks like it's in between. Like almost being a pillow lava, but still a lobate flow. And like I was saying earlier, I think a few <laughs> hours ago, there are three different different types of flows for seamounts and it goes it's based on velocity so the fastest is sheet and then low bait and then the slowest is pillow lava so right now you're looking at low bait and yeah some pillow lavas are down here they probably fell off from the low bait flow maybe or they could have formed like like a pillow lava <laughs> Whoa, look at that sponge. So at least some of you in the back row missed my uh, my joke earlier. I guess so. Holothorian? Um, did you really spoil it? I said Holothorian. Oh. What? We saw a Holothorian. What was it? So it was... Um, what do you call it when, it when a sea cucumber has no sediment in it? A, a, a holothurian. Oh, because it's hollow. Okay. We need okay. to work on our setup. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be able to get that one. That was good, though. Thanks. Very creative. Doing okay over there, Jake? You want to stop at the next rest area? <laughs> I'm just asking because you still have your turn signal on. I think you're tired. Well, uh, you have to go to the bathroom. Take a quick break. You know, oh, we never heard how you got started. <laughs> That's a really cool sponge. Mm -hmm. It likes to be a polyopogon with a bunch of other glass sponges underneath it. I can't believe that glass sponge allowed that. <laughs> I would literally, if I was a glass sponge, I'd be like, why on top of me where there's literally so much? It could be so many other places. <laughs> there's so many other options. Well, it's like, it's like when you're doing something outside with your hands and you can't uh, like brush away mosquitoes, you're just like, ugh. Yeah. I can see it's the like, sponge is just being like, oh my gosh, get off. Well, to be fair, they don't exactly have, like, a brain, so they don't really notice or care. Okay, uh -huh. but I care for it. They may not care, but I care We're about it. We're anthropomorphizing over here. Maybe I they're care symbionts, about. and you just don't know it. <laughs> yeah, maybe they do. You just don't know. <laughs> maybe they're really irritable sponges, and they're just, like, so over everything. All the critters <laughs> crawling all over them. Squat lobster squatting on them. <laughs> Crinoids. Crying all over them.
Have there been any uh, biological samples taken during this dive yet? No, not so far. Not at all during the dive? Nope. Oh, wow. Well. It, so far, rocks. we've the rocks. <laughs> the rocks. We know there's been no water so, uh, samples taken. Yeah, because the Niskans are out of order for this dive. Out of order. Oh, oh, We can oh. take a sediment core. <laughs> or try. In what? <laughs> actually, there could be sediment to, to sample in the caldera. That's a good point. Oh. Um, and it might, that actually might be interesting if there is. Wait, this is actually going to remind Sebastian was there, but at dinner I was eating with Val, and I was like, Val, what do you expect to find in the caldera? And she was like, rocks. And I was like, <laughs> gee. I was like, really? No way. <laughs> like, okay. I was like, oh, my God. Monosyl I was like, I guess I walked answer. into that one. I, I don't know. <laughs> rocks. I think Mike is hoping for a shark breeding ground. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that'd be cool. I mean, there have been papers on sharks living in calderas. Yeah, uh, one of our former uh, ROV guys, Brennan Phillips, who went into biology, actually has done some AUV stuff with some biologists over um, some, I think it was volcanic crater, like submarine volcanoes in the Solomons. And uh, they saw like different types of sharks like inside the, inside the caldera. A fish. I haven't seen Brennan in several years. Where's, what's he up to? Uh, he's a professor in ocean, uh, in engineering at uh, URI. Okay. He's got Still tenure. There. No kidding. Yep. Him and him and Chris Roman's lab worked together on quite a few yeah. projects. That low light cam was pretty cool. Yeah, they haven't been doing much with that lately. Is that a Camaro? No, this is a rat tail. How can we tell One day. rat tails apart from eels? From eels? Yes. Eels don't have that top fin. The, is that called the dorsal? The dorsal? dorsal. Okay. Yeah. And typically, they're even more slender than this. They're more evenly slender. Yeah. These guys have a little bit more bulge towards the head. Thank you. <laughs> Can I'm excited. Share? Can you please share what you <laughs> I'm done? trying to look more about maybe finding sharks in this call there. Can you bring your heading to zero four zero? Thank you. Yeah, is that a, uh, oh. These are. Which one? AZ animals, that one. Mm -hmm. oh. This is the one I was on. Oh, okay, sorry. A moment ago I clicked out. Oh, gotcha. Shark Kano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a, uh, I think there was a, a Shark Week episode about it actually. Really? Uh-huh. Yeah, so I'm on islands. Yeah, that's it. And the masses. Oh, there's actually a lot more increasing research into animals that live in active calderas, apparently. They're using it as a metric to see how deep sea animals adapt to possible increased te water temperatures from climate change. Oh, they do the same, yeah, with ac acidic waters around uh, vents that have a lot of carbon dioxide being released into the water.
like that Hawaiian snake, the one. That oh yeah, yeah, the little, little, yeah. little tiny. Little baby. Yeah, the little uh, snake from yeah. The little snake that What's lives. That called? Hawaiian snake. Just called the Hawaiian snake. I thought so. Blind Hawaiian Blind snake. snake. Blind. Right. It looks more My like bad. a worm. It's yeah, so cute. It's really cute. <laughs> oh, I was like, I actually wouldn't hate that snake. They look like it's just like What's a this? little friend. Yes. Oh, that's a good question. Can we zoom in on that? It looks like a pink lizard, but I don't think it is. That'd be cool. Oh, uh, it's a coral from above. Tiny, tiny coral, huh? Maybe. Lizard coral. I think it's hemichorallium. No presume. Then these rocks have a botryoidal texture. Botryoidal. Botryoidal. Is that hemichorallium? Little gray. Is that bubblegum? a glass sponge behind it? Coming out. You looking where is that purple ball up above what you're looking for? Oh, that yeah, that's a glass sponge. The purple what? It's coming into view right now. Where? Oh, that's that's oh, more that. white. I guess that's a sponge. No, that's not it as a sponge. <laughs> so what we're looking for is like a dark, dark purple. Like think those cucumbers that we see every once in a while. Eggplant purple. Yep. But they have not. It's not been those that we did see. No, those are cucumbers. This guy looks literally like an avocado. Like, here is a photo of a similar one that they've seen in the past, but it's differently colored. Oh, okay. That's huh. the avocado It's thing? literally so unknown, they call it unknown animalia. Wow, okay. <laughs> they've only seen like one or two, and they look like that, while well, the one that we saw was bright purple, which makes it even more notable. Now I want to see it. Is that what you were talking about earlier that's shaped like an avocado? Yes. What can people Google so they can like see what it looks like? Honestly, um, the only way they're going to be able to find it is to go to the um, NOAA Benthic Animal Guide, click other under other animals, and then literally they have to look around until they find it. It looks like a round kind of avocado shaped thing with a red ring and clear body in this picture. I would describe it as a jellyfish with no tentacles. The ring almost looks a like a bit. heart from over here. Yes, and a yeah. heart. A red heart. It's a heart shaped box. Yeah, you go to a uh, right above a bale of taxa, just Animalia other. And it's the second and third column at, all the way at the bottom. The one that we saw was just completely dark purple. And if anyone does look that up, let us know your thoughts on it. We're looking at lobate flow. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want me to say? Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. Do you have a favorite flow, Hannah? Like, are you excited about this lobate flow? The verse flow. Mm, my favorite flow is the low bait flow. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you laugh at that? Because it's the way you said it. <laughs> oh, okay. Is the low bait flow. Because I had to think about it. Yeah. Jake, you've got some friends from Rhode Island in the chat telling you you're doing an awesome job. Oh, really? Yeah. I wonder who it could be. They said, well done, Goose. Goose. <laughs> I don't know if that means anything to you. Top Gun. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I opened the can of worms. I opened the can of worms. <laughs> Let's buzz the tower. Ed, you know, we still haven't heard what you how you got into the field. It's oh, this yeah. line of work. Longest intro ever. Let's hear it. We have a viewer that says that um, they think that that uh, creature we were just talking about that looks like the avocado with the red ring we were just discussing looks like a plastic shower cap. <laughs> yeah, I can see <laughs> I that. Can see that. <laughs> That's funny. I can see that. <laughs> I 
Well, this was kind of your your hot your rock, your rock spot. I don't think it's looking too too rocky. Nar, we gotta Nar. keep going. <laughs> it doesn't rock. But we will find one as soon as we can. You have time. But this flow is making me excited. Excited for the caldera or just excited in general? In general. Because now it looks like it's turning into she. Not really, but it now looks like it's in between a low bait and a she. That's a nice boulder. It's a very nice boulder. Or you could say it's a rock. If anyone got that reference. Yes. It's not a boulder, it's a rock. So watch lead. Yes. Did you want to go to these sort of pinnacle features around waypoint 10? Like go up onto them or skirt around the edge of them? I mean, I think we may as well go up and over. Uh, that way we can see what's on top. That's kind of like the highest point here. Um, yeah, I mean, that waypoint's kind of just arbitrary. So we'll go over that uh, rise and then can you zoom out a little bit? Oh, I see where waypoint 11 is. That's, is that the, can you zoom out a bit more? Oh yeah, then, then we can cut to the, uh, to the east and go to waypoint 11. Uh, do you want to do both of these? Uh, I yeah, I mean, know. yeah, they're both on the way, yeah. Sounds good. Woohoo! This coral right in front of us is another Salandria, which is that hydroid overtaking uh, coral. And a cucumber right behind it. I wish ship log would update with this dive. It hasn't been added yet. Normal does, it, does it normally during a dive? Normally it does. Usually there's like a delay of like an hour or two. But it looks like it just hasn't been posted in general for this dive. Looks like we've got another wall coming up. Yep. Ooh. And there will be plenty of rocks to sample on top of it. I love what we're seeing. What would you describe it as? I would describe it as massive low bait flow. I wish I could have seen this erupting. Yeah, I mean, you can see how it cooled What's as around it was thing? erupting. What? Huh? Down there in like the corner? This? Yeah. That's the no, down there in the left. Uh, what? The bottom. 
I think it just went out of yeah, view. Yeah, just I went out know. of view. I did not see that. I don't know. I'm I don't so know. sorry. It was, a, it was a round yellow bridge. I think I saw a broken stock back there. Don't know if that oh was it or not. This is really cool. This is amazing. We can keep on the geology. Wow. Just multiple flows on top of each other. Look at so it up in, in here. Oh my gosh. This is so beautiful. Uh, I wish I could touch it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to touch it so bad. And climb it. I'd love to climb it, yeah. We don't get features like this on no. land because they've all been eroded by rain. And that and a so lot of these funny. ocean allow for a lot of these like weird geomorphologies that can't even occur on land. Mm -hmm. Just imagining this much magma and lava coming out is insane to like wrap my head around. That uh, every time, well, when I was on the oh, Big Island of cool. Hawaii, it was so hard for me to realize. Well. Seeing it in person, it, it really put into perspective how much magma and lava Whoa. comes out of these volcanoes that it made such a massive island. And when you're looking or at one of the places in the whole, uh, Volcano National Park, there's like a cliffside and you can see the like magma flow, like oh, well, remnants of a magma flow going into the ocean and it's building more land it's making it bigger and i it's so beautiful to see it and see it in person was just surreal bridge yep. Uh, can we do a move 15 meters at 060? Zero, zero. Thank you. Glass sponge. Believe mm -hmm. that's specifically a ferret sponge. Okay. Has that ribbon like structure. What's the white thing? The white thing? This? Um. Can I actually get a zoom on that? Fly trap, maybe? Anemone? Well, that's cool, the light shining through down below. Over zoom? Going in. Another salon. Salonderia? Mm -hmm. No, not that. That is a weird looking sponge. Looks like a Demo sponge, opposed to a regular glass, too close to a glass sponge. Gonna zoom on the next bounce up, if you get one. Let's full zoom, and coming out. Get some lasers in there. <clears throat> Round, hairy. Get up your botryoidal texture. Mm -hmm. Hannah, earlier you said that this looks like multiple flows on top of each other, and I'm just trying to like get perspective in my head of like, uh, and this may be something we don't have an answer to, but like time in between flows, how many flows, like this changed so much. Yeah, from, we don't know. Yeah, that's wild to think about. No idea. And that is why we collect these samples <laughs> to figure out how far apart they are. Actually, one of the... I took my geo geochronology class last semester, and one of the first lessons that we were taught was how archaeology and geology go hand in hand. And it was talking about the Pompeii and how the journals from observers. Yeah, from the Roman times yeah, in AD 79. Yeah, helped us understand pyroclastic flows. and how far apart they are and how many times did it occur 
and it was just well such it also gave us an exact date yes, exact so date, we wouldn't have, time, you know we would have yes. been able to get it maybe within five or ten years mm -hmm. but we wouldn't have known the exact date so that's really helped a lot of geochronology i think yes it did and it helped us understand these volcanoes better and there's a there's a famous um description by Pliny the younger Pliny the elder was on yes uh was at like at uh, Pompeii during the eruption actually died of asphyxiation from some of the gases. Can we zoom in on that round feature sticking out of the rock right there after you with this? the trip? Yes. But Is that the shrimp? I mean the lobster? or What? <laughs> Sorry. Is that Sebastian? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean the the flat lobster looking thing, the pink thing. No, wow. that doesn't look like an, as an asper. Okay. It could actually. I see that segmented tail. Maybe. If I'm right, if I'll be oh shocked. Oh, man. If it, oh, it actually might be. Actually. I'm doing a super <laughs> slow zoom just to build the suspense. <laughs> super slow zoom. Congrats, Hannah. You are correct. Oh, look at that. Yay. This is an asper. <laughs> well done. Crustacean. That's so right. don't have a common name. I just call them asters. Asters. OK. We can call it aster. Yeah, great job. Mm -hmm. Awesome job. They're completely blind. Anyway, so Pliny the Younger wrote yeah. a description of the ex eruption, um, and he described it as a large uh, pine tree-shaped cone. Coming out. It's one of the earliest descriptions of a, of a pyroclastic flow. Yeah, I think that was exactly who. Was he on a boat or something? Yeah, he was, yeah, on, he was on a boat. He, he like was on watching. a boat across the bay, yeah. and his uncle was on, uh, was on shore. Yeah. That was that was exactly it, and I remember. Or maybe it was the elder who who wrote that and then died later. Let me look it up. I don't remember, but there were two Pliny's. <laughs> yeah. But that was so cool to see archaeology and geology working together, and I was like, oh, that's kind of like. And at the time, I was like, oh, that's. Hopefully, that'll be what the Nautilus is like, and it kind of was, Bridge, no. but yeah. in a different way. Okay, yeah, Pliny the Younger wrote them, and his his uh, uncle, I think. Please do 25 meters at uh, zero six zero. His uncle was was on the on the shore at Stabii and and died of asphyxiation, trying to rescue oh. people. Can we see the corals on the right, please? Um, yes. That's a very gigantic Eridogorgia next to it, though, and a giant um, Salandria. Which one is which? Salandria is the yellow one. Um, the Eridogorgia is the one that looks like fireworks. I always think when we look at it at the right angle, it looks like the uh, power generator on Hoth in Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> Over zoom. When we look at one. When we look at those, that spiral coral from oh, right, exactly right. Uh, horizontally, it looks like the power generator. Can off. I see the bases, please? Thank Not you. bamboo. Not bamboo. These are primnoids, and they may be slightly different species or color morphs. Let's Seems like see. one has polyps all the way down Coming out. to the base. Mm. Then we got a pull light. Pull push. Large Asia. And a large Splandria. The Pasako gives me that those were primnoids. Slandria seems to really like it up here on these more like sparse flows. What do you mean by sparse? As in sparse in life. Okay. That makes sense. I was like, I know he doesn't mean not a lot of flows. <laughs> no, but they certainly are they are batrioidal. Bot. Botrioidal. Like, you say bo bat? Like, like Botox. It's bot. Bacrioidal? Bot. V O T. You had it right. Botrioidal. <laughs> okay, now I feel like you're just doing it on purpose. Is it B A T? Like it's bat? B O. Botrioidal. B bot 
Botrial. Like botulism. Yes. Botrial. Botrial. There we go. That's correct, Sebastian. Nice. <laughs> I'm going to start making you crap. guys pay into a jar every time I know, every you were just you doing it word. to annoy me. Okay. Uh -huh. Every time we say it wrong. No, every time you say it <laughs> at all. <laughs> well, then tell nature to not to stop having it here. No, put a tip jar back there. Every time you say botrioidal, it's a quarter. Well, we already talked about this. We don't carry change. So we should get rid of it. We'll take dollar bills. Give them a toast reader too. My wall is minimalist. I don't sticky. carry cash. Oh, boy. I started something. <laughs> yeah, I'll load up the grapes in the telestrator for you. Yeah, I'm going to circle every single instance of a botrioid. What is that on the right? Yeah. Oh, the coral? That was a dollar. <laughs> that was a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> morale fund. Would each of the little dots be called a botrioid? I have no idea. Botrii? <laughs> looks like a jumbo. That maybe. sounds like plural. A jumbo. These look like several sponges. Where's the sponge? I can't tell. There's a sponge. No sponge. Looks like an eye right there. Yeah. Oh, Yeah. actually. That yellow thing may be of interest. This guy? Yeah. I mean, that coral? Sorry. No, yeah, that thing kind of does look like it has an eye. If Lounge, if Upashna is there, can you bring her in to look at this coral? I think this might be something that she mentioned that okay, we might want to Okay, can we stop the ship, please? Rich, now. Probably a better luck. <laughs> this thing is like, around to our right. Yeah, but this is probably like wedged in in like a super. So it seems like there might place. be another one up on top. Oh no, it's oh this one up here. Yeah. Yeah. How fast were we just moving? No, I think we can access it here. Zero point two. Okay. We're just almost done. Can we get a zoom in when we get a chance? A nice jelly in Argus too. I think that's Atiola, actually, in Argus. Not in Argus, in At At Atalanta. Go for zoom. Turn in. Oh, there's a hermit crab on it. Oh. That is actually in focus, believe it or not. That's a full zoom, too. Okay. It doesn't look like a bamboo. I agree. Um, Asako, any opinions on this? She may be out for lunch. Ed, should I use the counter on all the different botryoids? <laughs> yeah, I they all they start fading off at four seconds. So oh, shoot. There's no way you'll get them all in there, yeah. <laughs> Is that Fill a challenge? The screen. <laughs> I've gotten like seven or eight before, but then uh, I'm not sure I ever got to double digits. Um, so we haven't heard from the lounger Upashna, right? Yeah. They're all passed out from the sugar. They must be. But there's still some left. I'll probably get another piece. I haven't gotten any. I haven't gotten any. Do you think we oh. should try and collect? Because she did express interest in a similar looking coral. Mm. Uh, let me run down and see if we can find her. All right. We drop a marker. Do you think we'd be actually be able to make it back here? Yeah, if we drop a marker, but uh, all depends on how far we get from here before somebody makes a decision. I'm sure mm. Dark knows where we are. Drop, drop red crumb. The, well, in the meantime, this is a tetrapleural sponge. Sebastian, that crust, crustacean we saw a little bit ago, yes. um, some folks were wondering if blind lobster would maybe be a common name that's appropriate for it. It would be appropriate Ooh. for, oh, also, can oh, we get a zoom on that purple oh. guy? There you go. Wow. Oh, wow, there, I think there's several. Is, is it me, or is this whole that rock whole a little line. bit purple? It's all it's purple. Yeah. Yes. Is this the Victor, Victoria Gorgia? Uh, it might be Go Victoria zoom. Gorgia, it might be a Plexurid. Might have to step the ship back. Um, okay. This, Pretty however, how far? looks like a purple stolonifrin. Purple stolonifrin. Which is the thing we had to peel off the rock the other day. Ah. I'm Oop. definitely documenting this. Asako saying O, oh, which is usually a good sign. Um, let's see. Kupai Naha, this is Kupai Naha. 
coming out. Love it. Can we get a look at that big, big purple coral as well? What is, is that a Venus flytrap up there? That's a Venus flytrap. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Over zoom. You might have to hold position using uh, bubble. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to be bouncing. Mm -hmm. That's a full zoom there, science. Oh, wow. I think this is Thank you. Victoria Gorgia. Yeah, Asako's performing that the other purple one is the purple solniferin octocoral. This one could be Victoria Gorgia or a purple plexorid. I'm not super familiar with the morphologies of either. So I may have Coming to take a second to consult. And then what are all these little things all over the rock? Yeah. Those are hydroids. So we're looking at a lot of purple stoloniferins oh. and a purple coral as well all over the rock above the yellow coral. Yeah, I, I was trying to talk to them about the yellow one, but we couldn't see it because you moved on. Um, it's right below us. We can just drop right back down. So Virginia's going to find Upashna because okay. she's her roommate. In the meantime, Let's figure out these purple corals. <laughs> so where are we? Yeah, that's. There's a, another. I haven't seen here. purple that color before. We seen it a couple times on the other sea mounts. Um, this is not the same yellow coral. This is a different yellow coral. This is that one's far paler yellow. The one that we're looking at was much more neon yellow. Do you want to go back to that one? Ideally, yes. Uh, I'll just wait for the. We put in the ship moves to move us back because we're getting close to the wall. We dropped a marker there, swing, too. So we're just kind of waiting for that move to come back. Um, Asako's asking for another zoom on the purple um, fan coral right above the sponge. Resume. Gone in. Try to be quick about it. I feel like that squat lobster is looking right into my soul. Right. Hydrates over on the rock. There's so no, much to look at out. on this rock. Botryoidal. Get rich. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the the collection joint, we never said it was going to Derek. Yeah, we did. Oh, okay. <laughs> he <Yeah>. did. Yeah. <laughs> I got another one. It's oh, a morale fund. Can we also zoom on this pink right below the left pink coral? There's a coral that's going yellow oh, to this? pink. This guy. Yes, right below that. I think that one had, to, oh, what's that swimming to? Um, that one's partially yellow. Is it dying or is it a parasite? And um, the purple coral is Victoria Gorgia. Oh, it looks like it's. Yep, that is a huh. parazoanthid. Uh, here comes um Yeah, if we could go Virginia. back to the yellow one now. Yep. The Atlantis is starting to move back off the wall, so. We're going we to it okay. now. Did you find her? Yeah. Sleeping? No, oh. Ah. Better that you went than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. we, we saw this rock over here. It's covered, has a, a Victoria Gorgia on it and a bunch of purple stone lifferins all over. I think it's right in between that rock right there where the sponges are down there. 
Oh yeah. I'm leaning towards the Catholic origin. <laughs> you can already see how bright pink it is. Yeah. yeah. I think there's another one up top to a smaller one. But I think the bigger one has the better polyps to look at. All right, can we get a zoom, please? One second. No worries. All right, go for zoom. Oh, coming out. I'll just. Is that what we're looking for? All right. All right. All the way back in. Oh, that Atiola is back in the Atlanta. Um, yeah. Like back here or something. Yeah, so guys, we're, we're going to want to sample this. Uh, Virginia is saying that we're going to want to take a sample that has some of the branching on it. So not just like the very end, for example. Um, and Sebastian, are we thinking that we need to sample part of the purple as well? Um, we don't need Victoria Gorgia, right? All right. <laughs> um, it should just be this guy, I think, okay. unless we want the purple snow reference. But those will be hard to get. Um, Sounds good. All right. Just this guy. I think we're aiming for a slurp. We gotta Sounds figure out how to get set up here yeah, first. Yeah. We're still debating. Branching, so. it's gonna be probably too big for the slurp. It's not as like solid as like a uh, Yeah. 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 Getting where to get a toe in there, Jake? So yep. it's flexible so we could slurp it, but another option is to throw it into starboard D or the forward bio boxes. Yeah, how much we get. <laughs> Thanks, Asako. Oh. Thanks, Asako. And Virginia. And Virginia. Yeah, I think we are. I think we are. If you Pashna says anything different last Yeah, just, but just let her know what it is, and she should be excited about that. And where do you want to try and put so this? So do you cake? think like maybe clipping like here? Um, like yeah, like a t so ten centimeter piece. For, does that make sense, guys? Say again. So I, I was showing on the Telestrator. Yeah, I'm looking. I, seems like it's going to be too big to slurp, but yeah, I think we should put copy. it in a forward bio box. Yeah, I would do. Yeah. I would do that. I would opt for that. Asako said to snip. snip. So yeah, we can put it in well, a we bio box. Yeah, we or have to snip it. Starboard. Full, full wide. Thank you. Thank you. And come in with you if you want. Good with their science? Yeah, that looks good. Looks good to me. Looks good? Yep.
see that cut? Right. Yep. Yeah. Thank you for that gift. So, racking back, forward box, oh, forward box. Um, left or right fine. Dealer's choice. Yeah. I will rack back and tilt down. Thank you. All right. So this was, yeah, so both Virginia and uh, Osako confirmed this is a, a canther gorget, which we hadn't seen much of. Is that a black coral, Sebastian? Yes, it is. Yeah, I can, I can kind of see the skeleton there, but I wasn't sure. Nice. Nice. All right. Thanks, guys. That is sample Amazing. 108. Thank you, guys. Yep. Box closing. Fantastic job. Concur. Uh, Sebastian, is there anything else you wanted to see here? Um, we can go ahead and move on. We can go ahead and move on. Copy. Copy that. So where did you get a purchase on that, Jake? Just the for forward port side of the porch? How'd you get yeah. wedged in? Yeah. I don't know. That worked. I got lucky there was a little overhang right there. Yeah. It's almost uh, like a leather star looking sea star up there top left. You see right there. That's right. Oh yeah, look okay. at that. Yep. What? Where? Top left of the frame. Oh, and that. <laughs> what are we looking at? Can we zoom in on that? The sea star on the back of the sponge. This? Yes. Oh, up there. Further up on the sponge. Oh, this Up one. and left of Got lasers. Yep. Lasers coming over to it now. That. Very small. It's like a, That's five, a good angle. It's like five centimeters. Over zoom? Quick zoom. Super quick. And there you go. Mm. It's close, but not what we're looking for. Thank you guys so much. Thank goodness. That would have been very difficult to get. Um. Bridge nav. Could you please do 30 meters at bearing 055? Huh? Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I always forget that. It's the one thing I always forget. Thank you. I would have said something. was like, okay, back to lunch. Yeah. We interrupted her lunch. Sorry, Saka. Well, we're lucky that she was present. Thank you so much. One last look at this purple. purple. Did you want to look at this again? Um, I think we're good. We got some good shots. Great. Another one of those stars. And another one of those yellow acanthogorgias. So, trio. 
interesting how all that purple was grouped together. That is what stolen stolen ah stolen no no ah stolen no Mithras corals do. They have a connection of actual flesh in between each polyp that allows them to crest over areas of the rock. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Hannah, are we seeing layers of lobate flow here on top of each other? Yes. Good job, Tori. Geologist. Mm -hmm. We'll make a geologist out of you yet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is waypoint 10 the edge of the caldera? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, and then we're going to go almost directly east to 11, which is inside it. But we're first, we're going to kind of go over this, mm -hmm. rise it, and then past it. We go to both of ET's eyes. Huh? It looks like ET in the topo. Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yes, last time we mentioned ET, we got an ET sponge, so maybe we'll get another one. Whoa, that's huge. More of these cool. large Salandria hydroids. Is that color of yellow what tells you that this is hydroids? Um, yes, they seem to be all the same color and they have a less um, prominent polyp structure. It's more slimmed down, less fluffy looking. And those are hydroids that took over a coral, or hydroids that have um, They like have that? a base of a coral, but mostly they can still spread out in their own right and kind of make themselves wider. The white guys are scleractinian corals. I like that word, scleractinian. Scleractinian refers to the average reef building coral. Oh, okay. I think I jinxed myself for seeing any sharks because I wrote out like the dive number and the depths and all that <laughs> in, in prep. So I think it, that's just not going to happen. Just shot yourself in the foot. Yeah. Okay, earlier when we were talking about the sharks and the calderas, yeah. I'd never heard of a silky shark before. Oh, yeah. These I've seen cool. one of them diving. They're big. Or they're rel like they're medium sized sharks, but yeah, mm -hmm. they're decent size. They have. You can tell them apart from other ones that look like that because uh, they have really long uh, pectoral fins. Mm. And they look kind of like lemon sharks and other ones, gray sharks, that sort of thing. But they have very long pectoral fins, as you can see there. Yeah. Are they the ones that was mentioned, the Solomons? Mm-hmm. Okay. And let me go back. So I think there were maybe... They saw a large silky shark. Huh. And then that's maybe the only one. There's a 
No, those aren't white corals right there. Those are just um, skeletons, I think. Bridge nap. Thirty meters at zero five five, please. Thank you. <gasps> the blind Hawaiian snake. Yeah. Cutie. I've got <laughs> silky sharks. The Hawaiian blind snake. Isn't it so cute? It it is really cute, honestly. <laughs> oh, I read the gorgeous little face. It's tiny. And I had the blind lobsters. <laughs> like I will allow that snake to live. To live. <laughs> You'll allow it? I'll allow it. It's cute oh, enough. That one, that one. I love that one. <laughs> Snakes freak me out. No. Yeah, same. Come on. <laughs> They're cool. Gallifreds. They're all muscle. Nar. Yeah, nar. Yeah. That's a nar for me. <laughs> nar. I've been around Venom. for a long time. Nar. Nar. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. I <laughs> remember. Have you guys little... ever like held a harmless snake? Nope. I've held. Uh, I refused. I refused to hold a harmless snake. snake. They're so cool. cool. It freaked me out when I was little enough that it? it scarred. Gone me. in. You have to face your fears. I had a friend that like loved love snakes, and he had like two at his house. And every <gasps> time I'd go over, he'd be like, "Hold it!" So I would hold it because I didn't want to be like, "I don't want to touch it." And you're too nice. It was oh, fine. I'd be just like that. <laughs> nope. I don't remember what kind they were, but they were cute. Wait, actually, one of my friends also had snakes, and he was like, yeah, they just, like, live in my drawers. Sometimes I'll open them up, and, like, I'll see them in there. And I'm like, isn't that not the scariest thing? That would, yeah, Could you imagine terrifying. Opening like your drawer for clothes, like, drawer. trying to grab a shirt, and then no, you grab your snake? Nope. Oh, my gosh. Nope. I had one of those reptile groups come to my school when I was in yeah. elementary school. And I got picked out of the crowd to <laughs> hold the boa constrictor. Traumatizing. And uh, the, the, the guy, the reptile guy was explaining everything about the boa to the, everyone in the, like, in the school. And there's like a couple hundred people and teachers and everything. Next thing I know, the boa constrictor starts to tighten around my <gasps> neck. <laughs> the guy's not looking. I almost, I almost passed out and the teachers had to like run. Oh my God. <laughs> So I'm not a fan of snakes. Yeah, so that's oh that's a no, no for Jake, too. Yeah. See, Jake has a good reason. Jake has a good reason. What's your story? Is there uh, a video Jake, of this? Jake's story scares me. Uh, yeah. I wish. How old were you? I don't know, like fourth or fifth grade or oh, uh, 10 or 11. Well, Terrifying. Or 10, I mean, to be fair, the snake was probably just scared. Everyone else is like best assembly ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're like, remember we that We almost one saw kid? our friend get strangled. I yeah. was just standing there like, uh, is this supposed to happen? Wow. That could have been your golden ticket, man. Yeah. <laughs> a couple more seconds, I would have passed out. I think. Like, excuse me, can someone help me? <laughs> <laughs> so is this three of these or one uh, basis? That is a fantastic question. I believe it's two. Hmm. I think just the one left is a little bit like the rock is disrupting the view. But I believe it's yeah. two. I could see that. And they really like, these Landria really attract the squat lobsters, I've noticed. Like every single one's had several squat lobsters. While the other fans, they've been largely ignoring. Mm. Jake, that reminds me, one time they brought people to my school and this was elementary school I was in El Paso Texas desert and they brought like spiders and scorpions and like we're teaching us oh. about how to make sure like <laughs> like if you got bit by a poisonous spider like what the different bites looked like which was honestly terrifying like I would have oh. been totally fine without seeing pictures this is of a that cool yeah. I learned a lot but <laughs> I was terrified <laughs> and they taught us to be like you can check your beds every night before you oh, go to sleep man. I definitely was being like I don't want I definitely was yeah because we did find a few scorpions like can we get a zoom please before that was not fun that's terrifying yeah on which part on the inside please inside fighting a little bit of a current oh wait, is the current taking you it's fine I just uh, take a second Looks like a mouth.
I agree. That's an interesting He's like, what? <laughs> oh, there's squat lobsters <laughs> under the lip. Like, Is there? Oh, you can just see one. I see it in the still camera. In the still camera? Oh, yeah. Oh, I see it. Over zoom? Oh, it's not swimming. In, in, in. Poohy. 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 I'm Poohy. focusing Poohy. on the back. Is that what you're looking for back there? The inside. That's what I thought. That's cool how it diffuses the laser. It's all glass. So. And coming out a little bit, fix the exposure. Oh, look at that little shiny bit on the left right here. Shiny bit on the there left. There goes that eel. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that fishing? Possibly fishing gear? Well, we saw that on another one of these earlier. Very I think it's bio, but uh, here, let's take a peek. Shiny. Sitting here thinking, boy, if only the video person would zoom on it. Makes me wonder well, how he got his start. Hard to tell. Material on sponge. Thank you. Coming out. There we go. Oh, hold on. Let's just square up. Bridge nap. I'll push. Uh, 25 meters at 055, please. So this is a uh, top of one of these pinnacles, kind of? Uh, yeah, we're on the edge of it. We have one more isobeth to go up. Ooh, whoa. whoa! What is that? What is that? That is a type of jelly. Let's get a zoom. Kupai naha. Kupai naha. Jelly. Oh, uh, now these are hard to imagine. Whoa! Uh, whoa! Wow. Kupai naha. I'll do my best, but those guys at uh, in Bari are better set up to do this. Um. I think this actually might be one of our targets. Actually, yes. Can I zoom? Yes, go please. For, go for zoom. Which? Oh, yeah. Coming Bridge in, net. holding. I'll go show. I'm going to turn my yeah. black levels down a little bit. Yes. Oh. Now, How I'm, do you propose we would even attempt to sample that? I'm temp Probably. tinting this blue a you little. You have to fly and slurp it. You have to press yeah. the slurp on and I have to fly, fly into it. That's the only <laughs> doing that. Lasers off. Lasers off. Lays us off, please. Thank you. Um, y the slurp will destroy it, but yep. we will get the materials. But what, let me see what the scientist wants to do with it first. Sure. Yeah, there's no other way we could collect this. Stuff. Full <laughs> zoom? Yeah, that's the only way you can do it. Let's see. There is a list of. This what? is beautiful. Jellyfish. Coming out a bit. I like that dark shot. They want it collected. Uh, yeah, it tinted blue though. They want to yeah, do what? They want it collected. Um, they say once in the lab, need good photos of specimen, preferably with transmitted light, and also with a dark field. I think we'll have to collect it and just do the Come best on. of what we can. Um, so I recommend the slurp. Because I don't well, think the box got, so. <laughs> will be able to keep it intact anyways. Well, you couldn't get it in there anyway. Yeah. So. Uh, okay, so can you, is that something we can give it a shot? Full wide. You can give it a shot, yeah. Black level's normal. Uh, get a, we gotta get a so, jar uh, open. I was, uh, I was just, I was discussing with Daniel previously due to the purple Tito, uh, can you turn uh, starboard camera Carter. on, bucket on, please? I just want to mention, so for the... Oh, bucket's on. Uh, All right, we got to go Stand by. So, uh, bucket one's fine. Which bucket? Uh oh, oh slurp one's fine. Tug him. Just one. whatever you could do. No, oh, we're getting bit. tugged. It's escaping. Turn off auto heading here. So just, just real quick, the permit states that one specimen can be collected if an abundance assessment cannot be ascertained, as opposed to we can take up to three uh, if uh, we've can, seen um, at least ten. Turn on the yeah. suction. 
So we're clear then, clear. science? Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're okay. Off. Okay, thank you. If we're going to do it, got to do it now. Yeah, um, you got to move quick. This is called, I looked he it up. Oh, go ahead. You it's a um, helitrophies. Yep. Helitrophies. But also, yeah. Hello? it's pololia, right? Can uh, so someone do a name? Jellyfish work for jellyfish? Sorry? Pololia? Isn't that? Um, that would be a question for Malia. Pololia. Yes. That full section there. Are you just going to try and uh, fly it into the suction? Yep. Copy. It's the only way to do it. We can always try and lateral uh, Atalanta towards you if you're out of leash. Ah. I got no leash. Slurps on 10. 10%? No, full. Full slurp. Is it on full? I don't know. Is it on? Is Tito's the slurp on? Yep, 100%. Yeah. Oh. Looks like you lost the tackle. Do you want to try and grab the uh, slurp and pull it out with the in I got to be able to fly it. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Oh, wow. Oh. Some of it. I see that part in no, the we, sample we, jar. It is yeah. in the sample jar. Yes. If you can't get the second half, that'd be amazing. Working Going on it. it. I think it'll come down if you just wait for it there. Nap. Ten meters at zero five five, please. This is like a dog on a leash trying to get another dog. Mm hmm. Getting tugged by its owner. Too far away. You guys should move on. Yeah, yeah no, that's yeah. okay. I mean, we. This is, 
this half, is fine. Half of it is, is certainly uh, we, quite a bit. And we certainly have enough um, video evidence for the rest of morphology, I think. Yeah. Yep. Thank you guys so much. Right. Zero suction. Uh, and that would be sample flush. Um, 109. Can we rotate the There we go. Thank you. In there. All right. A little push. Was this slurp jar three? What? That was slurp one. Slurp one. So we do want to keep our eyes out as well for an area that has rocks that we think are not, you know, glued down. Because um, we never gra got the one um, on the edge of the slope. So if we can uh, keep, we'll just keep our eye out for that as we move in into onto this uh, uh, high and then into the caldera. Be able to bring Atlantis heading around. No. Should be able to bring Atlantis heading around, you know. Sebastian, can you share the name of that jelly sample that we just took? Yes. It's Billy. So, sorry, I mean, it's super small typing. Um, they call it Halotrephes Masi, M-A-A-S-I. I probably have it here. Yeah, I can't read that. <laughs> Do we know what we hope to learn from this sample? I'm trying to read. I believe sheet, it's a morphology sample. So the scientist is looking to learn the morphology, and this is a species that's morphology is poorly understood. Mm -hmm. I know earlier we defined what we mean by the word morphology, but for anyone that has recently joined us, what does that mean? So functionally, that's just the shape of the animal, its physical features, um, how it works in the water, how it physically operates in the world. So a whole bunch of these mushroom corals? Yes, those are all at the mastis. Got a sunflower star. Bridge nap. Can we please do a move 25 meters at zero nine zero? And several have me crawling. Thank you. All right, glass punch. We should have checked when we had the camera rack back to see if all the Niskin balls are still there. Go ahead, Bridge. 
Uh, yep. Zero nine zero. Zero nine zero? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that an urchin? No. Yes? Yes. A white urchin? Yeah. Maybe a test? So guys, this is the uh the, the highest point I believe in this uh on the seamount, so that's where we are now. We're gonna start moving uh east across one more high and then into the caldera. Looks like it rises up in front of us a little bit more. If we were going to see any of those sharks, would this be an area? I mean, yeah, we're in the we're shallow enough, but uh, I I think they they a lot of um, these small sharks they they hunt crabs, and um, they may they may be looking for they may have more food on you know in, in the benthos where there's sediment, so they may not be on something that's so rocky. I'm not sure. Um, we have seen them in this sort of area, but they're also the the first few dives they were like. 700, 800 meters deep. Um, mm -hmm. So this might still be a little bit deep. So the scientist who's interested in that jelly sample is also the man who identified that, that those giant tenophores that we saw were a new species. That's I didn't know that. That's a new species? In fact, it's a new family. Oh. He saw a similar species also in the monument that looked different from ours, that was very, they were both very different morphologically from other tenophores. So huh. they, they might constitute a new family of tenophores. Cool. Who's that? Who's that researcher, Sebastian? Um, that is Dugal Lindsay oh. from Jamstead. Oh, man. He's not typing in, is he? No, he isn't. Good. Sorry about that shot, Dougal. Well, this is strange. Is this something missing here? He's huh. got a me. He's got an 8K imaging system designed mm -hmm. to image jellyfish. Uh, I am not sure what that oh, is. It looks like there's, like, one, one boulders one missing here. Hmm? Um, the ones at Abari? No, he's at Jams Tech in oh. Tokyo. Can he's not zoom? in Tokyo. Please. Can we get a zoom Can on? Can we get a zoom on this, please? Yeah. Like right there? Yep. Huh. Is that hollow class, class site inside? I can't, I can't tell. Are you talking about like right here? Like the lighter colors. I, yeah, I can't tell. It's just strange that there seems to be chunks taken out of these rocks. Yeah. Whoa, okay, that's nice. Yeah, it could be. Going in real quick. I'm I'll not come sure. out as soon as I get a little oh, focus, focus air coming out. I think some of the light could just be set, a light oh, sediment yeah, dusting. It is. It is just sediment. sediment. Yeah. yeah. So not, look at this. That's the movement of the flow. Yeah. Do you Fantastic. still see the manganese crust, it looks no. like? No. Well, it, so this here is, but this is the lava, I think. I think this might still be a thin layer of manganese, maybe. Oh, okay. Huh. That's just weird that there's, like, somehow something damaged it. Could well, there have been again, gas inside it, it that was, burst out? If it, this was a caldera, fractures could happen, probably. Especially along, around these P 
Peace. Yeah. What around these peaks would cause fractures? The collapse. Yeah, the collapse, the um, just, uh, earthquakes faulting, just the movement of the seabed. Mm -hmm. And the uh, lava chamber below. Magma chamber, sorry. That didn't sound right when I said it. Yeah, there's more of it here. These are little cup corals. Bridge nap. Yes, they, oh, wait, actually, can you zoom in? Uh, I saw some cup corals earlier, but I'm not sure if they're similar. Thank you. Yes, they're cup corals. Cup corals. That is a really tall sponge back there. Yeah, I see that. I'm just like waiting for the top to come one. into view. There's also a very tall bamboo whip right there as well. Oh, that's what I were talking about. Oh, okay, yeah, it's a bamboo whip. I thought it was just maybe it had a ET head on it or something. And yeah, that's another big sponge back there. So on the right, that's a bamboo whip coral, Sebastian? Yes. I see the bamboo little markings on the bottom. Yep, and that's why it's a distinguishing feature for bamboo corals. Then on the left on the top oh, is Jesus. a riddle gorgia. <sighs> something on the lens there. Is that an eel or fish Oh, maybe there? it's lens flare. That is a good question. Is it move? It's moving. It's a fish of some sort, or an eel. Are we getting told to move faster, or? No. Okay. No, no. Just checking. Derek, are we on a ship move? Yep. Okay, sounds good. I'm looking for that, where that skinny eel fish thing we saw went. I don't see where it went. Was that the hadrosaur? It looks far skinnier. That just sort of sounds like a dinosaur. Did I say the right word? That sounds right. Oh. Another something in the, was in the Argus cam. Wow, well, that's a long one. It was gone. That eel. Where is it? I uh, lasers left. Way off in the distance. See it? I cannot. Uh, here. Right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see it. It's a long one. It's very long.
These are just covered in cup corals. I think we have a, uh, what's the word? Fly trap anemone here? Yes. Deep? Yeah. And then a, two of these white urchins, which I haven't seen before. So yeah, I think just over this, we're gonna go downhill. Yeah. Is zero point two. Is that a Victor Gorgia right there on the right? Purple. Yeah, I think so. Victor you don't want to look at it, or are you okay? Ah, uh, we're good. Thank you, though. Then I see a bathy pathies. Bridge nav. Super dense in here. Super dense. Yeah, this is a, like this. I would take a nisk in here if we can. We do thirty meters at bearing Just because our sheer amount of cup corals alone is interesting. Thank you. It's a cool sponge. There's purple in the background too. There's a jelly in Atalanta's view. I think it's jelly. Oh. Uh, it's, oh. Oh. A couple of I can see it, but I can't get a shot on it. Uh, okay. Uh, Hadrosaur is a dinosaur. The fish is a halosaur. Yeah, I knew, it, I knew that didn't sound right when I said it. <laughs> the sore part always gets me too. Go for zoom. Cut in. in. The trio here. Which one are you looking at? Oh, you look at the purple? Victoro Gorgia. Yeah, Victoro Gorgia. Lasers. And coming out. It's like a south current, huh? Yeah, a south current. Halosaur because it lives in salt water, like halite. Halite is the one mineral that you can lick. <laughs> yes, that's true. Halite is in our salt grinders. It's literally just table salt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sodium cl chloride? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which sounds toxic, but mm -hmm. together it's not. I like how you can go to the grocery store and buy these containers of sea salt, especially from exotic areas. Yeah, like the Himalayas. And they have an expiration date on them. Yeah. <laughs> Looks funny. like the cup corals extend down the cliff side. You know, it's been on Earth for two million years, but <laughs> it expires next Friday. <laughs> then you must buy more. See a whip coral. See another Victoria Gorgia. The fourth urchin over there. Hey, what? The fourth urchin. Oh, fourth urchin? Yeah, we've okay. seen. Fourth white urchin. Then. Yeah. What is, do you see that clear object? So here? Right below, yeah, right there. Sponge. Is it sponge? Is 
Philandria. This overhang is crazy. Mm -hmm. like, how much weight is above that? Yeah, that's a sponge. Can we drop down and just see how far back in that overhang goes? What are you, what are you saying, Ed? Just drop all the way down and uh, see how far under this little overhang goes. I'm gonna expose for this real quick. Oh, wow. What? Oh. Whoa. I would Love. definitely climb in there. It's really cool. Whoa. See, I would love to climb and into there, that. There might be snakes in there, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> All right, yep, I'm leaving. <laughs> sea snakes. <laughs> Nar. 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 Huh. That's so cool. Is there something back there? Yeah, there's a squat and um, maybe an anemone. Can we get a possible zoom on the anemone? Yeah. Uh, also, the it's the best. right where the lasers are. I think once I zoom past the uh, visible part, the overhang, I can open up the iris. Okay. So getting closer? Uh, you're, yeah, you're fine there. Right. And okay. uh, go as negative as you can. Yeah, that's super helpful. Yeah, that's cool. All right, let's try it, eh? Yeah, let's try All it. All right. Going in. Little hook is. Focus. Iris up. Black levels down. Interesting. Very cool. Anemone. There's it's a couple smaller I mean ones that up too. Is, ah. So I'm throwing off the color of it by bringing the black level down, but hopefully it gives you a little better shot. Super That's, cool. Uh, I don't think it's seen. It might be a hydroid too, but it looks more anemone to me. Yeah, well, we're Can't not, sample this one. We're sorry. not collecting this. Yeah, we're not collecting. <laughs> I'm just it trying to describe. You want to swim back there. I'm sure communities like that are usually hard to see that far back, especially yeah, at this step. That's way yeah. far in there. That's cool. Hannah, what might create Fantastic this? Shot. Just cool. fracturing Push. in the seamount? All right, yeah. we, can, we can move on. Copy. Oop. Bridge nav. Because, like, look how it's broken even down there. Is, is that erosional? 30 meters at zero 090, zero, please. Mm, I don't know. Because <sighs> that was, like, towards the top of that pinnacle. So I'm wondering, and look at all this marine snow in the water column. Well, down there could be a rock but I can't tell. Mm. Like, I can't tell if they're cemented or not. I have bad handwriting. Canthagorgia, a black coral. Looks like a Salandria. Tiny sponge down there. Yep, sponge. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that is, dropping out of shrimp. All right, what should we do? How, how much of downhill do we have? Mm, probably at about here, which is like 80, 90 meters.
steep. Uh huh. Are we heading uphill or downhill right downhill. now? We'll be heading downhill, downhill yeah. Sledding. We're between this peak and there's another mm -hmm. rise up here. So we're like in a saddle. Mm. It's hard to tell that on the map. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, he's just zoomed in, that's all. In the past, I know we've looked for rocks in the saddle. Yeah, we'll, well keep our eye out. we looked for manganese nodules. Oh, that's what it was. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you prefer to go faster or slower at the same speed and downhill? Uh, if you want to just jump over, then you could bump it up to 0.3 or something. We could just... Uh, right, rather than following the slope down? Yeah. Yeah, that works for me. I mean, <laughs> if you just come up a bit so we know that we're above... We can just yeah. drop down on the and other pinnacle. Just, we can just do a little quick blue water instead of going yeah. downhill. Works for me. Uh, all right, uh, 0 0.4 or 0 0.3? I do 0 0.3, okay. so we can stop in case you were. We've got a really great question from a viewer, and it's something that we've been talking about quite a bit, and they're wondering why corals at this depth have these beautiful colors, like the purples, yellows, pinks. Well, I actually asked that question to uh, Virginia when she was giving a talk about mm -hmm. deep sea corals, We're gonna be and she says, we don't really know. Um, what, there's one theory they are talking about that um, some of these species may have been shallow water corals that the polyps drifted into deeper sea and they mm -hmm. kind of adapted. Um, and so their uh, their color comes from the species that they had back when they were in shallow water. Because, yeah, it, it doesn't really make sense. They live in complete darkness. There's no sunlight. Mm -hmm. the, the first time they're seeing light is with these ROVs. So, you know, their color doesn't matter in, in the depth. So it, it is a interesting concept that we're having these bright purples and pinks and yellows um, and whites the white makes more sense but uh yeah apparently that's not all that well known yet i love that though that's so exciting that we yeah have so there's many still a lot of things to find out we don't know the answer to but yeah i've been loving these purple coral it's like yeah they're such gorgeous. A rich color. it's a really nice yeah. like a slightly bluish bl purple I almost said slightly bluish blue, which <laughs> that's always accurate. Absolutely. Those just look like rock fragments. Yeah. So for our viewers, we're not not close to the bottom right now because we're going uh, downhill and we can't really aim the vehicles down the hill so we're gonna fly out a little bit and then come back down to the sea floor We made some progress.
8 to 12 settling in, but we got the birthday boy in the house on SPL. It's Jacob Hussain. Hey, happy birthday. The one, the only. Boom, boom, boom. Of a beach boy. Have <laughs> a beach boy. What a beautiful adventure we're on. We're excited to be with you all. We're getting settled into watch, and uh, this is our second watch of this exciting dive, unnamed Seamount 15, and I think we're going into the volcano. Potentially. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> oh. The scientist keeping me in check. Appreciate that. Dr. Val? <laughs> no, there's just been that banter all day about, well, it could be a caldera, maybe not, but it might be, you know. So, nah, nah, nah. Um, we're, it is. We're uh, <laughs> probably about to find out, maybe. It depends on what sorts of uh, evidence we're, we do or don't see. We're definitely, probably, maybe, gonna, yes. gonna figure something out. It's definitely Nailed on it. the gradient. Yes. Of caldera to non-caldera. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 